Hi once again, this is Alex from the Rialto Owners Group of America and today we're going to do a tech video based upon the coach batteries in everybody's Rialto. We had a couple inquiries come in and there seems to be some confusion. There are a couple different versions that are out there. There's single coach batteries and then there's dual coach batteries. On this particular model, the 99, it's a dual coach battery located in a compartment right behind the front seats. So we're going to take a look at that and show you how to make that complete circuit the proper way safely and effectively. This is the battery compartment located on the floor behind the front seats in the 1999 QD model. It's made up of two batteries for the coach system. In this case we have two large interstate deep cycle batteries both bought new and installed at the same time. A word to the wise, if you have one battery that fails in a multi-battery system it is necessary or at least strongly recommended that you change all the batteries at the same time as mixing new and old batteries can cause premature failure in all the batteries. On this particular system I want you to note that the batteries are not connected in series. In series means positive goes to negative and then negative goes to positive, positive goes to negative until you complete the entire series. In that type of a connection the positive connection We'll go to the first positive terminal on the first battery and that will go to the negative terminal on the next battery and then the positive on the next. What you do when you have those hooked up in series, if I had two 12 volt batteries I would create a 24 volt system. In this case we're not doing that. Everything here is based on 12 volts. So we have the main connection with the two positives connected to each other and the two negatives connected to each other. The compartment does seem a little bit tight and you will need to move your batteries around just a little bit on some angles to get them in and out. Make sure you get the good batteries like these ones that do have the carrying handles on them. The best way to do this when you're putting them in, make sure that the guards for these particular terminals are on and in place. That way you reduce the risk of bumping them against something metal that may cause them to arc or ground out because you don't want that. Then once they're in place, secure them with whatever fasteners that are here. In this particular case we have threaded bolts that come through, they get brackets that go across and they would go underneath the handle and then attach in. So here's the long and the short of it. When you're changing the batteries if you don't want to mix up the lines or if you want to take it a little bit more easy on yourself just change one battery at a time making sure these lines are fully out of the way. Of course at this point in time the engine is off so you don't have any charging coming back to you. Make sure the well is clear. In my case I put a cushioning floor mat down there. It's a rubber mat that helps prevent shock on the batteries. The air holes are clear. I make sure that there's no rot there. Nothing that's going to fail that's going to allow my battery to actually fall through with vibrations and so forth. We want to make sure that that pan structure is still very much intact and able to support the weight. Here you can see that I've left the safety caps on the battery when I'm putting it in because we do have metal surrounding this. We don't want to have contact between these terminals and anything metal that can ground out an argon. It could actually cause the battery to explode and send acid up into you. Something that's not a whole lot of fun. Okay this part gets a little dastardly. You have square batteries and a semi-rounded hole. Make sure that your caps and your safety guards are securely in place. Bring the battery into the compartment, slide it down to that first ledge. Pull up the seal a little bit and you'll be able to pitch the battery, slide it down into the hole, past the seal, and then put the seal back in place securely so you don't have any off-gassing getting back up into the department. At this point in time you're not going to secure the battery down to the mounts. You want to make sure that all your wires fit without kinking or bending. Always put the negative on first. In this case I prefer to use the screw terminals because it's easier to attach and remove them. I'll put that down in place. I'll put the butterfly on and I will make sure that this is down securely. You want to make sure that that ground is in place for safety not just for circuit. I leave the cover in place on the larger terminal just in case there's a bump or something knocks next to it. We will secure that with its butterfly nut the same way. 
You want to make sure that it's can tight. You don't need to use a tool on these because if you need to get it out, you'll need a tool to remove it. Plus, you don't want to crack these. This is fairly soft lead that these are in. Again, leaving the safety cap in place. Now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll change the other battery. Once that's back in place and the lines are in place and everything's where it needs to be, I will go ahead and secure the batteries with their straps. I'll cover them with my insulating mats. Then I'll secure the door back down and the batteries are fully changed. You need to take note that there are engineered breathing holes in the battery pan itself. This allows this particular area to breathe while the batteries are charging. You see, as you're driving down the road, that's when your coach batteries are being recharged by your system. Anytime there's recharging of those batteries, with the rare exception of the higher end gel batteries, you're going to have some off gassing. What happens in this case is as you're driving, the batteries are charging, those vent holes underneath the coach allow that battery compartment to breathe, it takes the gases out of there, and leaves them behind you down the road where they should be instead of inside your coach. In my case, I have some thick insulating rubber mats that I also put on top of my batteries so that when I close this door, which happens to be metal on top, if there should be any case that causes these batteries to come loose where they could have contact with that metal, that insulating pad is going to prevent those batteries from arcing out. Now remember, you can also monitor your battery conditions with your control panel that's located at the back of your unit. Your control panel has a battery condition button located here on most models. Simply depress it to see the level of your coach batteries and release. In this case, it showed us that it was 75%. A few words about proper battery care and maintenance. You have to remember that if you live in an area of the country where you're prone to freezing temperatures and your Rialta is going to sit for more than a couple of days, you need to remove those batteries to protect them from freezing. A frozen battery is a dead battery. Once a battery freezes, it does not recharge the way it's supposed to, and it needs to be replaced completely. Secondly, as you know, while you're driving a Rialta, your batteries are charging up. As they're charging up, we talked about the off-gassing. Well, the off-gassing does come from somewhere. It comes from the fluid that's inside the battery, so you're losing small amounts. It is necessary under regular use to make sure that your batteries are topped off to the appropriate level. Don't use just anything in those batteries. What you need to use is pure distilled water, which is available at many of the large big box stores. Fill it only to the level indicated inside the battery by the manufacturer. Make sure that when you're going to fill these levels that you take the caps off carefully, you have on high protection, and the batteries aren't hot at the time that you're doing it. Be very careful not to sweep any debris inside. It's best to wipe off the batteries with a lightly dampened paper towel or a stiff bristled brush prior to opening up the caps to keep the debris from going inside. Fill them to the appropriate level with the appropriate fluid. Press the caps on. Don't pound them and don't hammer them on. If the cap is not going on with just hand pressure, remove it and check the edges of that particular cap to make sure that there's not a cap seal that's bent. You want to make sure that these things seal up tightly because as you're bouncing down the road, you don't need battery acid coming out, especially down into a metal compartment below where you can't see it. Something to keep in mind about proper battery maintenance. Even if you happen to live in a warmer climate where your batteries are not prone to freezing, if your Rialta is going to sit for several weeks or several months, it's best to remove those coach batteries and move them to a cool, dry location and put them on either a trickle or a float charger. This exercises the batteries so that when you need them, they're in the best condition they could possibly be. When a battery is in use for, well, lights and the other conveniences that make our Rialta so much fun to have, that's a normal way for the batteries to discharge and when we drive we recharge those batteries. But if the batteries are left in the Rialta for a prolonged period of time, even when they're not under use, they're still discharging. That type of discharge actually weakens the battery if it's allowed to occur over and over again. And each time you go to recharge that battery, you're going to have an issue because it's not going to reach its former full capacity. So when you go off-grid, you might have a problem staying off-grid without a little bit of assistance. So keep in mind, proper maintenance and care of your batteries can help you keep those batteries working to their optimum for a very long period of time. But even short periods of misuse or abuse can wind up costing you out of pocket. I'm Alex for the Rialto Owners Group of America, and this has been another Tech Tip video.